Good evening, everybody, and happy midweek Bible study. God bless you all. And uh, today we are going to look at the Gospel of John. We're starting this week uh, in chapter one again in verse. We're looking at the last verse of chapter one, and then we're going to look at the first 10 verses of chapter two. And what I'd like to show you today is I'd like to show you Jesus as the Son of God, right? I'm sorry, as the Son of Man. Last week we showed, we talked about Jesus, Son of God. This week we're talking about Jesus, Son of Man. What does it mean when Jesus says, I am the Son of Man? It's the title he used more than any other title. Um, and today we're going to see how he uh, refers to himself as the Son of Man, what it means, and then we're going to look at his very first miracle, which was performed at a wedding in Cana, okay, which clearly demonstrates that he, in fact, is Son of Man. So let's start with John chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 51. I, I'm not sure if I said 59. I meant to say 51. And here's what he says. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, we know that Jesus obviously knows his, his scripture and he what he's doing here basically is he's reciting Daniel's prophecy, right? Uh, if we go to Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, uh, Daniel has a night vision. And, and what does he say? Daniel says, I saw one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. And, and he came to the ancient one, which is the devil, and was presented before him. To him, to Jesus, was given dominion, glory, and kingship. Okay, now this describes Jesus, doesn't it? Okay, this is Jesus coming before the ancient dragon, the, the Satan, and he's coming before him and he's being presented to him and he's, and he's given glory, dominion, and kingship over the devil. What did he do on the cross? He defeated Satan. He defeated death, okay? And that was his one mission. It was to come here to die on a cross, to rise on the third day, to defeat death for us so we could be forgiven, right? So what does it mean? Why would, they, why would Jesus use this term, son of man? Well, what is John trying to tell us? Because the first place we see Jesus using son of man is here in John chapter 1, uh, verse 51. He says, you will see Okay, the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So let's look at that. Let's look at that name, Son of Man. Well, what does it tell us? It tells us that Jesus is fully man and fully God. You know, John makes it very clear to us all throughout his gospel that Jesus was a man, right? Jesus, Jesus wept in John chapter 11. Jesus slept, right? Jesus went to weddings. We're going to see that today. He was fully man, but yet fully God. Okay, now, here's, a, here's something that I think is going to help you. Um, son of man. Now, if you look at the word of, that's the preposition. Uh, if you look at that word of in, in Hebrew, okay, which is important here because John wrote this gospel, obviously, in Hebrew, right? It was then translated to Greek. Um, but when you look at the word of and, and the Hebrew meaning, it gives us a very a, a different understanding of what this means, okay? So the word of uh, in the Hebrew uh, it could mean made of, it could mean belonging to, uh, it could mean over, or it could mean from. So what Jesus was really saying was, I am the son of God belonging to man. 
Or he might say, I am, um, I am the son, of, I am the son of God, okay, uh, from the son from God over man. Uh, so this, or he could even, you could even say, I am the son of God belonging to man. You see, so Jesus was sent, okay, to oversee us, to be over us, okay? He is the God-man. Uh, he is our model. He is our Messiah. He is our teacher. He is given dominion over all things, especially man, right? He is son of God over man. Okay, so that's another way to look at it. Um, Jesus uses this title more than any other title. Uh, I think he uses it like over 50 or 60 times in the New Testament, okay? So now Jesus is declaring himself as son of man. We've talked a little bit about what that means. Now, what, what is he going to do now uh, today in this, in this scripture to demonstrate that he is in fact not just fully man, but he's also fully God. And we're going to see when he, when he does his first miracle here in John chapter 2. Okay, let me read these verses. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. His mothers said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone jars, the kind used by Jews for ceremonial watching, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled him to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the ceremonies. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best until now. Okay, let's look at this scripture. This is just, um, there, it, this is so rich. It's so deep. There's, there's so much going on here. Um, I, I just love the word of God. Chapter 2, verse 1 starts with, on the third day. What does he mean by the third day? Well, this is a continuation of chapter 1. If you go back and read chapter 1, you're going to see that John is picking up here. This is actually the third day since Jesus made the announcement uh, that he was, in fact, Son of Man. It was the third day since Jesus had met Nathanael. And Nathanael said, you are in fact the son of God. Okay, so at this point, this is the, the third day from then. Um, at this point, you know, Jesus has been, he's been baptized by John the Baptist. He spent 40 days in the desert. You know, uh, John has made the announcement that he is in fact the Lamb of God. Okay. So John, John here is telling us on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. Guys, I, I, I want to keep this study short, um, but here, here's the thing. A, a wedding at that, in that time would typically last a week. Uh, the preparation for this wedding could have taken a year or more. Um, this is a, a, to be invited to a wedding uh, was one of the highest honors. And why would Jesus come to a wedding? And the, the reason he's there 
And the reason he wanted to be there is because <laughs> this is holy matrimony. A wedding is, 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 is such an, an important affair to God. This is where a man and a woman are joined together in the name of God. So Jesus is there. And I, I think it's amazing how, uh, you know, he, he just comes to a wedding like a normal person. He, you know, and, and what's kind of sad is, is Jesus is not attending weddings today <laughs> the way he did then, because he, today he is not invited into most weddings, which I think is, is a sign of our brokenness. Jesus' mother was there, and his disciples had been invited as well. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Okay. Jesus says, woman, why do you involve me? Now, this is important. Why would Jesus refer to his mother as woman? <laughs> Now, now bear in mind, if, if you were to translate this into the Greek or the, the Greek language, what you're going to see here is he wasn't saying woman to be sarcastic or to be belligerent. He was saying something like dear lady. But the significance is he's not referring to her as mother, okay? Because he sees maybe for the first time that Mary is not his mother. Okay, she is no longer there instructing him. He has now taken on a new role, son of man, son of God, fully man, fully God. But he realizes this is not his mother, referring to her, her as woman. Remember when he was on the cross, when John and his mother were there, what did he say? He said, woman, this is your son. John, this is your mother, right? So you see, this is Jesus in his full deity, seeing this woman who raised him from birth as not a mom, but, a, but as, a son, as a daughter, as a daughter of a king, okay? He says to her, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come, or he says, my hour has not yet come. What, what does he mean by my hour has not yet come? Well, Remember, Jesus came and had one mission. His mission was to come and die on a cross. And that, that's, that was his mission. Okay, so when he says here, my hour has not yet come, he, what, there's one of two things he's referring to. Either God, his Father, has not instructed him to, to transform water into wine, or God has not told him to do this miracle, or Jesus was just so focused on his mission of the cross, that's all he could think of. He wasn't worried about them being out of wine. Now, running out of wine at a wedding in that time would have been a major embarrassment, a major, major embarrassment. But Jesus says, Jesus says to Mary, listen, my hour has not yet come, okay? So what happens next is, um, what, what happens next is his mother goes to the servants and she says, do whatever Jesus tells you, okay? Now what's interesting, this is the last thing that Mary ever says in the Bible. But look what she says, do whatever he tells you. Guys, what else do we need from the Bible? If we could follow that one command, just to do whatever Jesus tells us to do, what else would we need? Okay. Now, let me go on to verse 5. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Now, what's interesting here is why did Jesus have the servants put the water in the jars? I mean, couldn't Jesus just have 
put the water in the jars or just magically had wine appear in the jars? Why would Jesus involve the servants? Well, it's the same reason he involves you and he involves me. He doesn't need us to do miracles, but he wants to work through us to demonstrate his lordship, to demonstrate that he's God. He wanted these servants to see. And notice how he says, fill the stone jars to the top. He didn't want anybody to think that maybe there was already some, uh, that he was going to add some wine to the water. He said, no, fill it to the top. He wanted to make sure there was no doubt that he transformed water into wine. Guys, where does wine come from? Well, there has to be a vine, right? There has to be sunshine. There has to be water. The vine has to grow. The grape has to grow off the vine. It has to be stamped and pressed and fermented. None of that. <laughs> Jesus miraculously, miraculously transforms this water into wine. <laughs> Why? He's the son of God. There's no other explanation. There's no other way it could happen. He's the son of God. Referring to himself here as the son of man. Fully man, fully God. Okay. <clears throat> so they filled the, the, the water jars to the top. Then he told them, now draw out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. And then he calls to the bridegroom and he said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine later. Jesus, see what Jesus does. Um, when, you, when you're not following Jesus in this life, usually the way the world works is, they, the world will bring you what looks good first, but what comes later is never good. Isn't that the way it is with Satan? Satan says, look, here's all these good things that I can give you. But then later on, he gives you the bad things. But with Jesus, it's just the opposite. You see, with Jesus, when you follow him, it's going to be hard. But he brings out the best in you later on. You see... So it may be hard to step in and walk with Jesus at first, but just like he brought out the best wine later, he's going to bring out the best in you later. From now until eternity, Jesus brings out the best in us, the Son of Man. Father, thank you for this time today. Lord, give us revelation. Help us to see Jesus uh, as fully man, but yet fully God. He, he knows what we felt. He knows what we feel. He's walked in our shoes. He feels what we feel. He hears what we hear. He sees what we see. God, help us to know. Help us to know our Savior. Help us to draw closer. Help us to have a bond and a friendship with him. Help us to be intimate, Lord, with your Son, Help us to follow him, Lord God, all the days of our lives. Give us revelation, Father, on who he is and who we are in him, with him, and through him. We thank you, Jesus, for this time, and we praise you in your name. Amen.